this show is very unique, and I partially why I enjoy it so much is because it. Um, I feel like this is more musicians on stage versus actors, more or less. I mean, do you do you guys find a distinction in that? Um, somebody else talk. Over. It it does feel like playing in a band for a lot of the show, um, but we're we're all we're all pretty much primarily actors, I think, really, that just play instruments as well. Um, so. I don't know, there's no distinction, it's just, it's all blurred. We're just, we're doing what the show requires, which is acting and playing and singing. On my tax <laughs> return, I put actor musician. <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> you know, um, I, I have to say, I did, I've done a show, that people are like, oh, it's so amazing. There are shows where the actors play instruments. I was in one that was won all the awards, and it was Sam Mendes who, who did American Beauty, and it was his cabaret, and they're, they're reviving it, actually, recently. But that was much more like... You know, a couple of hot Kit Kat girls who quit playing violin in fifth grade. And then they were the band later on. Whereas these guys could all, we could all actually play our instruments pretty much before we got the gig. We've, we've learned to play other things more, but we were all, we're actors. But, but all of us have had that 10 year immersion thing where we got good at something. So, so do, you all, do you enjoy playing your own instruments on stage more than playing to a band or? Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, I've never been in a band that's this big before. It's like it's like being in. I've always had like a dream of having a massive band, and then suddenly you've got it. And it's <laughs> like it's great, and everyone it it keeps it fresh and alive, and you you know because it's it's slightly different every night because someone's in a bad mood or someone breaks a string or. Or what happens then if you guys like break a string or or you just say stop the show? I gotta restring or. Well, we, we, we do nice. theater. We do theater. We're used to it. You know, it's like that's. Stuff goes wrong every night, you know. The audience never realizes it, but stuff is always going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and like all the little things that go wrong, we hear it and we see it, and we know and we know kind of what's happening. But it's all about sort of improving in that moment and staying with it. And, and there's contingency plans for yeah. uh, like if if Arthur breaks a string during the very first song, there's somebody else that's assigned to pick up that song, to pick up the guitar on that song. And you know, I mean, there's a whole list of who takes what when a string breaks. So. For the sake of the sound guys, not going. Who the hell's playing? Oh God, we have an actual contingency plan. Right. So the the um, how many of you guys are original cast? Are any of you? Yeah. So you recorded um, you recorded the the soundtrack as like all not an isolation booth, right? Like which is typically. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, the um, we did it with uh, Steve Epstein was the producer of the album, and he had just done an album with. Yo Yo Ma and Chris Seeley, he did the uh, the goat the goat rodeo sessions, and the way they they recorded that album, it was like they did it in like a farmhouse, and they and they all sat in the same room and played together rather than each being in an isolation booth listening to headphones. And so Martin, our music director, and and Steve Epstein kind of got together and they decided that that's kind of what they wanted to do with this and make sure that it felt like we were all playing together rather than playing to a track. And, and so, so hopefully what came off is a very kind of raw session sounding like thing. You know? Yeah, that, that was, I mean, that was another question I guess I had, I was thinking about that the music is so raw and I think it's written and designed to sound like that and to come together in that, in that sort of thing, but it's well rehearsed and like the pre-show music, all, the pre-show that you guys do, it's all, you have set songs, right? Do you know, do, the, do you do the same songs in the pre-show every time? Yeah, anybody else? Can yeah, you well, we have, a, we have a rotating list of about 20 or 30 Irish and Czech folk songs. And uh, part of the cool thing about, like Arthur was saying, about being in a band is that you come in every night and uh, right where you sign in, they normally have a list of the songs that are going up that night. So it's like you come in and find out what the set list is before you go out and, you know, get on with the band. And when we started, we uh, were asked to bring in songs. And uh, so uh, we contributed a lot of them, you know, the things we had. And, uh, and uh, you know, the thing that's, that's great about it is it gives, you know, there have been other shows where musicians have played, but it gives you ownership. You know, uh, it, you really feel like you participate. I you know you here at Google know a lot about strategy of making people feel like they're participating, you know, and that, that really helps us. You know, we own the songs, we help express the, the, char the other characters' emotions as well as our own when we step on to do it, you know. And, uh, but the songs in particular, y y you know, in the, in the beginning are uh, uh, meaningful, you know, if, if you brought them in and just by uh, happenstance, they wanted things that weren't such Irish cliches. And it comes from uh, John Tiffany, our, our director, and uh, from Glenn Hansard, of course, uh, the pub culture. 
you know, where people would get in the pub, and if you couldn't express your emotions through words, you could sing it. And uh, so that's, that's the idea of that. Oh, and we have microphones in the aisles if you guys want to ask questions from the or audience. Sing. Oh, so you guys or sing. Or sing, yeah. Well, uh, the problem so, with that is... <laughs> the, the choreography as well um, in the show is very, very unique, and I haven't seen anything like it, and I quite enjoy the choreography. Like, how did, how did that come about? It was a lot of improv to start, right? Yeah, Stephen Hoggett is our uh, movement uh, director, choreographer, and... Uh, um, did, so why are you guys laughing? Did it was because Zygo. Yeah, why don't you t answer it, Zygo? Okay, uh, sure. I, in, in the process of creating the show, I mean, one of them all, I feel like I'm like hiding behind everybody. <laughs> uh, it, people were asked uh, to contribute movements, and all of the movement is based on uh, the emotion. And it's very rooted in the emotion of everything. And, and and there's nothing like you'll see in Newsies where there's like you know pot of beret, turn, 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 kick, you know. Back with We're not newsies. We're not newsies. Because I mean, no one could. We would put but, it in if we could do it. But, we, uh. but yeah, it's all, it's all meant to enhance and um, kind of embellish upon the music. And so everything is really cohesive and works together uh, so that you never notice one thing more than the other. And everything is just kind of a, an, you know, an accent to everything else. Right. If I may, um, Hoggett broke us up in Boston when we did this workshop and not really knowing what was going to happen with the show. And, Hoggett broke us up into groups and said, like, you're bored, you're sitting at a table, and we would c and just come up with some, a story of a couple of gestures that you could teach one another. And so we would all do them in our little groups. And those little pods of actors came back and taught movement to everybody else. And I'd say 60 or 70 percent of certain num songs are all extrapolated from movement that people came up with in that little session. And then he, and they were, you know, it'd be like, you're bored. It wasn't specific, but then in the bank scene, when they're trying to get money from this sort of jaded old banker, they, do, they, they awaken. There are little gestures that they make that are very small, but they're very, they're, they're very powerful at capturing the emotional essence of the of the scene or the music in a very simple gesture, you know, like a classic iconic move or something, and it's all it found all set from now? the actors. It's all set now, but it was found material from the actors. Yeah. Stephen, the sorry, I was just going to say, Stephen Hoggart has got a company in the UK called Frantic Assembly, and I don't know, like 15 years or something, and it's really established and really well known in the UK, and it's totally like signature his style if you see all all their work is is really similar to this it's all like what Zygo was saying about from an emotional place it's not like just move your arm here and there it's all like guttural and it's it's amazing to watch yeah. and then one of the other challenges was was creating choreography that uh, people could do while playing instruments like the end of act one with that song we just played gold um every one of us who's playing that song and singing it is also dancing and i remember the and I remember the first day I got into rehearsal down at the New York Theater Workshop, I was the only new guy there, and they had all already established most of it. And the first thing we did on the first day was started to learn the choreography for gold, and I was already intimidated. But then I looked over across the room, and this guy's got a cello strapped to his chest. And I'm like, is that guy dancing with a cello? <laughs> What the hell I'm, is not this? Well, I, I, it, I not didn't, well. I didn't have to do either play, sing, or dance particularly well, obviously. Do you have a cello harness? Yeah, that I, was yeah the, we kind of invented it. I want to tell the story about the first, when we were learning gold in Cambridge and, and all in fear of losing our jobs because we couldn't dance and play instruments at the same time. <laughs> and Andy, Andy was particularly freaking out because he was like, well, I don't want to get cut out of this number. He's like, I got a freaking cello. I was like, what am I going to do? So he like had a belt on, took his belt off, and he wrapped it around his neck, and he tied it to the cello. And I was like, that is baller. That is so good. <laughs> And I, I was like, all right, well, if he can figure out a way to dance with his cello, I think I can figure out a way to do it with my guitar. And it was, it was, very in, it was inspiring to see everyone sort of uh, rising to the occasion. You know, it was, it was a lot of new demands, and sort of we, we fueled each other that way. You know, you'd see someone sort of rising to it and like, okay, yeah, I should do that too. It's yeah. great that moment in the show. I'm looking out towards the audience. You guys are all dancing. And as soon as you start dancing with it, I see people just going, oh, my God, like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> You're saying the, the choreography, um, you know, represents emotion and it, and it represents, uh, I guess, the meaning behind the songs, right? So, I mean, every night, I guess show after show, you do eight shows a week. I mean, it's, it's got to be very emotionally taxing because this is, I mean, this is about anonymous guy and girl, but the whole, the whole ensemble, you guys are all very involved and on stage constantly. I mean, do you... Yeah, I do think you, that's an underrated... Uh, uh, ta I mean, it, it is trickier than it looks to just... Yeah. 
night after night, just be sort of detached, be an audience member. And uh, I, I will say that I think all of us are big fans of not only the story that is told, but you know, the movie that was that was a hit that got won the awards, and also of Glenn and Marquetta's music. I know for a fact that myself, when I first saw the movie years and years ago, um, it struck me in such a way that you know, I said, if there's ever a, a show or something like that, I got to be a part of it. But I think that's, it fuels us each night, like we were talking about with the pre-show set list, but as well with this company of people. I mean, we all love what we do so much and have so much damn fun doing it that it really, it never, I mean, sure, it gets tiring because you do it eight shows a week and we hang out with each other all the time and, you know, we get on each other's nerves and, you know, it's like a family, though. And it's really lovely to go out. I think we're very blessed in that we get to go out every night and tell this story and sing these songs. And people are so moved afterwards that it kind of keeps us going. I don't think there's ever a time where we go, you know, oh, I don't want to go into work today. I think like we, they, it except has to today, be. today, apparently. Uh, except today. Because um, we, well, I, 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 I mean, most of the time, I agree. We usually are really eager to get to work. Um, laugh it up. Laugh it up, Fuzzball. Laugh it up. Sorry, he missed the tour of the of the lunch of, of lunch, so you know he missed out. So. Well, I got to say, the guys who started uh, original cast of this, you've got, you've done over six hundred shows, and it's like I have I've never done that many shows of it. I've never done anything that many times, uh, <laughs> at all. Yeah, it's a blessing, uh, you know, I as an know. actor. For forty three years, you know, you can't you know, when you're in a hit, you, it's it's so rare. And the thing about this show is that so many things came together, you know, like an aligning of the stars, you know. As Joanna said, that uh, Stephen Hoggett had this company Frantic Assembly that did the same kind of work with actors and tables and chairs for many years, twenty years or so. And uh, but uh, it wasn't until this, until something really came together and that was bigger than everybody, and they all had that kind of that that look on their faces, you know, where we've discovered something that that nobody quite owns, but we all do beyond all of us, you know. And uh, uh, Tiffany it came when we moved to Broadway. Finally, we started in Cambridge with a hundred seats, and then when we moved to Broadway, he was it, almost tears in his eyes came up to us and said, you know. We may close early and we may not get very far, but we've come this far and it's really great. But and nobody knew that we would go on like that, you know. So to have one best musical. Uh, say again. And then you won best musical. Yeah, best musical and and you know, but the idea of you know people playing their own instruments, you know, uh, uh, and telling a story that you know since Elvis, since the Beatles, since uh, on and on, uh, blues folks uh, forever, the drama of holding your own instrument and telling a story there is really intense, and we've known it for a long time. And so it has this global impact. I see people on the line afterwards when we're talking to folks, you know, from around the world, and it just they can't even uh, some don't speak English, you know, and they're still moved because they know the iconography of the of the the images there, you know, all the all the different characters, you know, and so it's it's really this. Uh, uh, thing that that uh, is uh, you know beyond us all you know so well we are oh yes question so i apologize i haven't seen the show yet clearly i have to go see it but, yes you uh, do uh i noticed that it seems like it's the kind of show that would be the kind of thing you want to do in a hundred seat theater with like an intimate thing what was it like moving something like that where you're breaking the fourth wall so much to broadway where you've got this you know all these people and all this yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. Well, we were scared. We had to have workshops, you know, when, when they had workshops with the vocal coach, you know, to fill that theater, you know, to try to bust it up. And once we relaxed and got into it, we understood, you know, it was okay. It was a natural thing. That's amazing that it didn't, it really didn't change that much from 100 seats to this big theater. It really did not adjust that much. A few lines came and went, things like that. But it just sort of blossomed all along the way, which is, a, 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 you know, and you just had to adjust a little bit. Yeah, at New York Theater Workshop, it was a 200-seat house. You know, it was very very intimate, uh, I mean, and in Cambridge even less, I think it was about 100 in that little place. Um, and so, I mean, all of us were quite worried about the move uptown and into an 1100 seat theater and what that was gonna do to the delicacy and the intimacy of the show. But I think, in fact, it had the opposite effect that we felt it was going to have. Rather than the show sort of overwhelmed New York Theater Workshop. It overwhelmed that 200 seat house because there was so much sort of happening on that stage, even though it was a very delicate story. And I think in the bigger space, it feels much more delicate. It feels like, oh, look at that little thing up there. And I, hope, yeah, hope I think there's more work. energy to share. Because yeah. when, I, when I watch it, and even in, in like the sound check earlier, like I was, I was stressed out, hurting all you guys together, and you're know, straggling in, and I, and I sit there, and all of a sudden you guys start playing, and it's just like, I'm captivated by the it's energy the thing about the, the, coming off of the, the stage. The way the play works as well. And like, I mean, you guys haven't seen, or you watched it the other night, but 
Yeah. You haven't seen it, but I watched it before I came, uh, I was in it, and I was amazed by it. You go to a Broadway show and you're like, oh, wow, it's very funny. It's very different to London. I walked in, the ushers were like, welcome to the show of your life. And you're like, oh, wow, okay, great. We're going to have a, a riot in here. Uh, and then you sit down and this very, very quiet show starts. And you're like, oh, is this, is this meant to be happening? And, but you're just completely sucked. It's mesmerizing. Right? It's, a, it's an amazing thing to be part of. And we, we kind of play with that on stage by bringing it down as far as we can without people. But it's, it's amazing. You see people just... Just lean in, you can hear a pin drop, and it's when it works. The, 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 those moments when it really works, it's, it's amazing to be. Yeah. Thank we you got, very much. We've got time for one question, then we've got we to get out of here, unfortunately. Um, this is a question for Joanna and Arthur. Uh, just wondering what it was like coming in and being replacements for the original cast, what it was like if you had the opportunity to reinvent the characters yourself. I've seen the show a couple different times, so I know it was a little different with you guys as the leads, and great. Add. We had total freedom. We barely we rehearsed. We, barely we literally rehearsed. We just learned came it in and like, did it, the, like yeah. John Tiffany, our director, um, was amazing. Like we we rehearsed all. We learned and rehearsed the music back in England while we were waiting for our visas to come through, and then we flew in on. We got two days' notice that we were coming, that we were actually flying. So they called us on Friday and said we booked your flights on Sunday. We were like okay, and then they're like, and your first show is on Friday. We were like. What? We had two rehearsals, so one run. We had run two and rehearsals then we were with in. these guys, yeah, and then a dress rehearsal, and then we were on. And so we had, we were just given. John Tiffany was very clever, I think, because actually we both found that liberating yeah. and as and opposed also, to like, scary, like we found it as a freeing. director. Like we had some. Hey. <laughs> as a director, John. Shut up, everyone. Uh, John is. Um, He's amazing, and um, I don't know if any of you have seen Glass Menagerie yet. If you haven't, go and see it. It's the most amazing pit, and it's, it's, it's the same team who, who put together this. And, it's, and I said to John afterwards, I was like, how did you get those guys to act so well? And he was like, I just let them go on with it. And it's like, he really, and which is him doing himself down completely, because it's not, it's not as easy as that. But he has this way of just empowering actors to make you feel like, you can do anything and that you can be confident to. And also he didn't try and replace, I mean, obviously we're, b we're both so different from Kristen and Steve anyway. And I think he was clever in not trying to just find reincarnate, uh, reincarnations of, tho of th them as actors. We, you know, he just started from scratch almost and just looked for the relationship and uh, between the two characters as opposed to trying to find another Kristen and find another Steve and see if it works, because it just wouldn't. And, um, and when we were auditioning, I we we saw we kept, we flew over here for our last audition, and we saw the show, which could have been a horrendous mistake. So I was watching Kristen being amazing, and I was like, "Oh God, I've got to try and do this tomorrow." But John came to me before my audition, and he said, "Just do what you did in London," and so it gave me the confidence to go, "Okay, I'm not, I can't try and be Kristen. I can't do that. So I just have to have faith in what I, what I do." And so yeah, we were given a lot of freedom and. Um, and that was liberating. Yeah, the material completely supports that. And it's yeah. guy, the characters are called guy and girl. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm really excited about coming back in 10 years' time and watching other people mm. do it. And like, I think it's yeah. the, they're those kind of part. <laughs> you'll still be there. Uh, uh, and, uh, I'm but, the only one with three children. <laughs> well, I, I, we are at time. Unfortunately, we have to uh, wrap this up. But um, the show is currently playing at the Jacobs Theater here in town. Go to oncemusical.com to get your tickets. And everybody, go please see it. It's amazing. The whole show is incredible. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>